Welcome back to our Chem 152 video series. In this video, we'll be talking about the math behind finding free energy change for various reactions. The first part of this question asks us, without using any numerical values, predict if this reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous at high and low temperatures. The first critical piece of information here is to know that at low temperatures, we look to the enthalpy change to tell us if it's spontaneous or not. Now, if that enthalpy change is negative, of course represented by delta H, that means we will be spontaneous at low temperature. However, if delta H is positive, we will not be spontaneous at low temperature. Now notice we didn't give you any numbers for this question, but you may know from Chem 151 that the reaction indicated above takes a reactant and combines it with oxygen and makes CO2 and water. This type of reaction is called a combustion. And any combustion is exothermic. Just as a review, exothermic means energy exits the system. This might be easier to remember. Remembering exothermic starts with EX and exit starts with EX. In more practical terms, we can think of this as something that gives off heat. And anything that gives off heat has a negative delta H. So in this case, our delta H for this process would certainly be negative, and that tells us this reaction would be spontaneous at low temperature. This basically means if we do this reaction, we're going to get heat out of it, and we don't have to put any heat into it to make it work. The rules are different at high temperatures. For high temperatures, we look to the entropy change, not the enthalpy change. If the entropy change is negative, that means we are actually not spontaneous at high temperatures. And if delta S, the entropy, is positive, that means we are spontaneous at high temperatures. So the situation with entropy is exactly the opposite of the situation with enthalpy. And once again, enthalpy tells us about low temperature. Entropy tells us about high temperatures. Now, in order to determine the sign of entropy, just like in previous videos, we will look at the moles of gas. If we gain moles of gas, that gives us positive entropy. But if we lose moles of gas, we'll get negative entropy. If we look at this equation, we can see on the left side of the equation, we have one mole of CH4 and two moles of O2, giving us a total of three moles of gas. On the right side, we have one mole of CO2, but two moles of liquid water. And so we're going down to only one mole of gas. This tells us that our entropy must be going down because we are losing gas. We will say our delta S for this process will be negative. Therefore, this process is not spontaneous at high temperature, but it is spontaneous at low temperature. To find what the change over temperature is, we can actually do some math using our values for delta H standard and delta S standard. This next question asks, given the standard entropy change and enthalpy change values for the reaction, find the temperature at which the reaction changes from spontaneous to non-spontaneous. As we found previously, this reaction will be spontaneous at low temperatures, non-spontaneous at high temperatures, but let's try to find that temperature. The equation for that temperature equals delta H standard over delta S standard, that's the enthalpy, divided by the entropy. 
The enthalpy will usually be in the units kilojoules per mole. The entropy will be in units joules per mole Kelvin. So we'll have to remember to change the units for entropy to make them match the enthalpy. Most of the time we'll just say divide by 1000 to change to kilojoules. So when we write this, we'll write the enthalpy, negative 890.77 kilojoules per mole on top. On the bottom, we'll say negative 242.9 divided by 1000 in parentheses. And we'll note that that dividing by 1000 will change us to kilojoules per mole Kelvin. If we use the conversion, we'll now have negative 0.2429 kilojoules per mole Kelvin on the bottom, and negative 890.77 kilojoules per mole on top. The kilojoules will cancel, the moles will cancel, giving us an answer in Kelvin. Make sure to realize that the temperature will always be in Kelvin. We'll do this division in a calculator, and we'll get 3667 Kelvin. The reaction will be spontaneous at any temperature below this, and not spontaneous above it. So now not only do we know where it's spontaneous or not spontaneous, we've identified the exact temperature where that changes. This next question asks us to find the free energy change, abbreviated by the symbol delta G standard, for the reaction at 298 Kelvin. Before we do the math, let's look at this number line. We've drawn a mark at 3,667 Kelvin, that was the changeover temperature, on this number line, and we found previously that any temperature lower than that would give us a spontaneous reaction, and any temperature higher than that changes the reaction to non-spontaneous. Let's first keep in mind that spontaneous reactions have a negative delta G value. And if we have a negative value for free energy, what that means is once we start the reaction, we don't have to add any more energy to make it continue. It will keep going on its own. For reactions that are not spontaneous, which this reaction would become above our mark, we would have a positive value for free energy. If we have a positive value for free energy, that means we would have to keep adding more energy once the reaction starts in order for it to continue. Now our 298 Kelvin that we've been given would fall into the spontaneous region, and we would expect to get a negative value for free energy when we do the math. But let's talk about the math now. The delta G standard will be equal to the delta H standard minus T delta S standard. Both delta G and delta H will be written generally in kilojoules per mole. Temperature as before is in Kelvin, and delta S is usually written in joules per mole Kelvin. Once again, we're going to have to divide this by 1000 to get the correct units. So let's find our free energy change. We'll say the delta G standard is equal to negative 890.77 minus the temperature, which was 298, multiplied by our delta S, which is negative 242.9, divided by 1000 to change our joules to kilojoules. In our order of operations, Let's handle this multiplication and division chain first. We'll take 298 negative times negative 242.9 divide by 1000. When we multiply, we will get positive 72.38. To complete our math, we'll take that 72.38 and subtract 890.77. When we go to the calculator, we'll get negative 
0.39. This will be in kilojoules per mole. So now, not only do we know the reaction is spontaneous, we know how much free energy is going to leave the system. We can take the math one step further and calculate the equilibrium constant for that reaction. The equation we use to find the equilibrium constant is as follows. Delta G standard equals negative R times T times natural log of uppercase K. Now, don't confuse this uppercase K with Kelvin. Uppercase K in this equation means equilibrium constant. I'll give you a brief introduction as to what the equilibrium constant means for the moment. The equilibrium constant is a way of measuring how favorable a reaction is. In general, if you have an equilibrium constant greater than 1, that tells you the reaction is favorable. And if you end up with a constant that's less than 1, that means the reaction is generally not favorable. The word that they use in this course to describe a reaction that's favorable is exergonic. Unfavorable reactions are often called endergonic. We'll cover this topic more in depth in a future video. For now, the only important part is that our delta G standard was negative 818.39, a very, very spontaneous reaction. Therefore, we can probably expect our K to be fairly large. But let's do the math to prove that. Our delta G standard will be written in kilojoules per mole. Our R is going to be written in kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Our temperature is going to be in Kelvin, and the natural log of K has no units. Typically, the R value you'll use for this equation is going to be 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin. There are other values for R you could use, but that's your go-to for this equation. So we automatically know R. We have delta G standard because that came from the previous problem, and we know T also, so all that's left is to handle the algebra. We'll start by writing our equation one more time. If we divide both sides by negative RT, we'll end up with ln of k is equal to delta G over RT, and we place the negative sign in the front. To remove the ln, we will use a base E exponential. Once we do that, our equation will look like k equals lowercase e raised to negative delta g standard over rt. So let's place the delta g in its position. We will have negative of negative 818.39 divided by parentheses r which is 8.314 e negative 3 times temperature, which is 298. In your calculator, make sure that you place the denominator in its own set of parentheses so you don't accidentally do the wrong operation. So we we'll start by entering lowercase e raised, open parentheses, negative of negative, which really we can change to positive, 818.39 divided by 8.314 e negative third times 298. We'll go to a calculator and enter this. The answer that we get is truly massive because we get 2.85 times 10 to the 143rd power. This tells us this reaction is extremely, extremely favorable. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.